What's good, Josh Bones? Back at you with another one. So I was digging through my deep freeze and I came across a pleasant surprise. Last summer, me and uh, some buddies went fishing. Shout out to Captain Chris with Spool Rotten Charters out of Swansboro, North Carolina. Uh, we, he put us on a ton of fish. We slated out there. And uh, I was digging through my freezer today and I came across some um, some vermilion snapper, red snapper, bee liners, whatever you want to call them. And I had like this like epiphany of something I wanted to do. A double crab stuff fried red snapper. Mind you, this will work with any fish. It's just something I have and I'm lucky to have it. So um, uh, we're going to do two different types. One of them is going to be battered fried. I'm from the 757. That's just how we do it. And then we're going to do the more traditional uh, no batter fried. And we're going to see how it turns out. I guarantee it's going to be delicious. So, hey, get your fish ready. Get your crab meat. Let's go. So since I caught these myself, um, you know, I was able to scale them um, <clears throat> and get them nice and clean. I clean in the cavity as well. If you don't know how to do this, don't worry because most uh, fish marks you get this from, the people will do it for you. Um, so when you do these, you know, you wanna act like you're, pretend you're filleting it. So cut uh, on the back of the head and follow that blade right down the spine. But when you cut, make sure you don't cut so deep um, that you're cutting through the skin because you want it to stay together. You'll see what I'm talking about. And uh, also don't cut through those rib bones, those uh, pin bones, because we wanna have this be like a, fillet this on the whole fish. So if you do that, you're gonna get bones in your in your, uh, in your meal. And it should look something like this, just a butterfly open on both sides. Um, and if you did a good job, you could probably see right through the other side. So that's what we're looking for. So now it's on to the crab mix. Um, I added two eggs, that, that helps keep everything together. You don't want it just falling apart. What will happen is it will just fall, fall apart and melt in the grease. You can see I used claw meat. Um, claw, the crab meat is just super expensive and the claw meat was readily available and I like it a lot. Um, breadcrumbs are a must to keep it together along with the eggs. Add a little bit of your favorite seasoning. I did Old Bay and then mix it up really well. If you're using lump meat, don't work it too much because you want those lumps to stay intact. Now um, I'm just putting some butcher's twine down because what that's going to do um, is allow the fish to be held together during the cooking process. So at this point, flap the skin back carefully and pack as much crab meat in there as you want. I mean, of course it has to be manageable uh, so you can actually flip the skin back over, but I probably could have added more myself. So um, make sure you do both sides. And um, and once you're done, you're, you're gonna flip it over. And this is where the butcher's twine comes in. You kind of want to get it a third of the way through the fish on the bottom and from the top. Um, so just tie it, don't cinch it down too much because you're gonna squeeze the meat out. So just tie it enough to keep, keep everything held in. Um, and then I like to, you know, I'm a fruit lover, so I had to add um, an orange in there to kind of give it that tropical flavor. And then I just did the same thing with the butcher's twine, a couple good knots, you know, cut off the excess. Make sure it's butcher's twine because it can withstand the temperatures. Don't use any type of regular rope. Make sure it's made for cooking in high heat. Now I'm just scoring the skin. What that's gonna do is allow my seasoning and my batter to, um, to be incorporated into the fish better and it gives it a nice presentation as you can see. So now our fish are all ready for um, seasoning and battering. So for the batter fish, we're gonna hit it with the egg wash first, then throw it in that seasoned batter. I can't give you my recipe, but I'm sure you probably got a good one yourself. Go in for the second egg wash, and then throw it right back in the batter. What that's gonna do is give you a nice pronounced crust that's gonna really be set off when you fry it. For the one that doesn't have any batter on it, I'm gonna use mustard as a binder. It lets the seasoning stick really well, and it's pretty neutral when cooked. It doesn't taste like mustard. I'm using the Wild Boy blend on mine, but you can use any seasoning that you want until the Wild Boy blend becomes available, obviously. And check it out, if your fish fry pan don't look like this, you haven't hosted enough cookouts and you ain't fried enough fish. But in the meantime, I ain't gonna judge you, just drop the fish you got now. And the results are amazing. You had that nice, white, flaky, uh, mild snapper, that world famous snapper, and that really sweet crab meat is just, it just makes like a whole nother like out of this world combination. So I hope you guys can get on it um, and I hope you enjoy the meal. Like, share, subscribe, help, drop a comment. And I don't know, I don't know why you're even still watching this. Go to the fish market right now. Get yourself in on some of this. It's one of the best things you can make in the kitchen. I'll see y'all later.